Hi everyone, I'm going to do a quick update on the mod system in Star Wars The Old Republic because there was a dev post by Emmanuel Lucinci and he kind of just spelled out what their philosophy is behind the mod system and he really laid out what it currently is as well. And actually with the last time that I posted a mod um, guide, if you look at the upload date, it, it was a bit ago so things have really changed since then. So, long story short, uh, he spelled out that the orange quality um, of loot is the fully moddable loot. This is what we did see in beta the last month. Uh, if it has an orange border around it, it doesn't mean that it's epic quality or great quality or anything like that. It just means that all of the stats are modifiable on that particular piece of gear. And also an update since the last time I posted a mod guide is that mods are removable now. It co does cost credits when you remove a mod. Uh, when you pull it out, you just basically drag it out and they'll say, hey, it's going to cost you this many credits. Um, it's really, really cheap at low levels, at high levels, that is working with high level mods. It's, you know, it's still not too bad. It's, you know, maybe about three hot ball matches at the most expensive. So nothing, nothing too bad to remove a mod. And that means that you can save your mods um, after you've put them into stuff and you know use them again on the next set of gear that you find that you think is cool and uh, a lot of people don't know but you can hold I think it's control and right click to open up an item and uh, you can swap out all the mods wherever you want you don't need a mod table to do it so they specified that that that's something that they want to do and and keep going forward with and improve the user interface on and also that Mods are reverse engineerable. That is a crafter like a cyber tech or an artifice. You can take these mods, reverse engineer them, and make better mods. But more than that, it was just a really, really good dev post because um, it was this giant, giant multi-paragraph, I don't want to say wall of text, but um, like brick building made out of paragraphs as bricks of text. And it... it it really gave you an idea of the philosophy that the devs have behind the mod system. The idea that you grab a low level piece of gear and you can mod it all the way up to max level. That's totally not true. The devs said that you could do that at some point. Um, everyone really latched onto it and repeated it multiple times and kind of exaggerated uh, the universality of you know what it seemed like they were implying. But uh, that's not, never has been true. We always assumed it was a bug. Well, it's not, now we know it's not part of their vision. Really, what they want for moddable gear is that uh, it's something else to work on. So, you know, you get uh, space commendations. You can get the space suit, um, which is fully moddable, so that you can make that space suit a an end game thing to wear. Um, you, maybe you work on your Tatooine faction, not faction, your commendations or what have you, to get a full set of Tusken Raider outfit. Or you work on getting your Slave Leia bikini outfit. And then when you have those outfits, then you put the mods in and then you can wear that. And it takes extra work. This is not something like as you're leveling up, you're going to get to look however you like to look, like in Lotro or EverQuest 2 or... Or I think now that WoW has transmogrification, that's another one. Or, you know, most, pretty much any MMO out there has some sort of an appearance tab, you know, Star Wars Galaxies, etc. Um, Tor still doesn't have that, and it's not really what the mod, the mod system's not intended to, to fulfill that. It's more like something else to work on. Uh, they did also clarify that all of the uh, green items, that is, green quality is... Um, you know, like, I think it's called prototype or, uh, or something like that. Those can be, um, those can actually, those appearances can be found in crafting. However, to get the crafting recipes for those, you have to find them through rare mission skills. So they're rare, they're rare recipes, really. You don't just go to your, um, crafting vendor and, you know, learn like 50, 60 different, uh, different appearances all at once. And then you can make all that moddable gear. No, you make non-moddable gear <laughs> And, um, and you have to, you know, through working with someone with mission skills, work on getting these, a piece here or a piece there of the set that you really want. So that's kind of a, in a way, a nice bone thrown to crafters, but a kick in, kick in the pants if you like making your character look the way you want it to look. So a lot of people wanted the mod system as a replacement for an appearance tab. It's clearly not. It's just, you know, here's these outfits you can work on getting. 
if we, it'd be nice if we had an appearance tab so you could just you know put them on you didn't have to mess with the mod system in order to wear them um or if you could just you know mod you know change your appearance to look like whatever you want but that's just not the system that we have in tour at launch maybe some people will like the visual progression you know they've seen these visual progression trailers where you see oh this is what a low level trooper looks like this is what a mid level trooper looks like etc well you know maybe they like that um i don't know anyone personally that that enjoys that more than having an appearance tab but there might be some people that like that cuz at least at least some people must be like that on the dev team or think that that's a good idea so that's about it. Um, that clarifies their vision. Their vision is not to have mod, modding gear replace an appearance tab in any way, shape, or form. It's just some additional cosmetic outfits you can work on uh, to look neat if you want to. But, but they're really, really not geared as something to help you customize your character as much as just give you something you have to do. Maybe show off that you got all these tattooing commendations and you got the Tuscan Raider outfit. Uh, a status thing, a show-off thing, not a look-however-you-want kind of thing. And I should also mention that they clarified their reasoning for taking away um, the fully modability of purple items. Purple, you know, is kind of the uh, um, artifact quality, the really nice quality items um, that that are really good drops. And they were fully moddable, most of them, uh, before. And they took away the most important mod slot, the one that des decides your damage, uh, the one that decides your armor rating and all that, that's no longer modifiable. They they justified their reasons for doing that, but pretty much long story short, they want you to do all the operations, the the raids as it were, all the flashpoints, and just do the gear old, you know, World of Warcraft vanilla style, and that's what they're talking about, is they want you to do that kind of stuff. They don't want you to just do that stuff for the stats and then look however you want, they want you to kind of look like that raid gear stuff, you know, unless you've worked on Tatooine Faction or something like that, you know, to get uh, your special outfit there, or social points to get your Slave Leia bikini outfit or something like that. So any any appearance that you have, they want to be some kind of a status to say, look, I have a lot of social points. Look, I have a lot of Tatooine Faction, that kind of thing. So I just want to post a quick video, um, throw, throw out some B footage and, uh, you know, in the background and just say what was posted today and that's what was posted today so take care so